Good morning. This is Kara from the Ministry of Encounter No More. What I've done this morning is not drink any more coffee yet because I could literally talk for two hours. Literally, I could talk for two hours about the faithfulness right here. And this is part two of To Flush My Dog by Elizabeth Barrett Browning. So I'm going to give a recap of part one because great authors like myself, I'm thinking of J.R.R. Tolkien particularly, give back matter so you can dive into anything of this sort of art, which YouTube, reading of books, um, with accompanying artwork like you're about to see in the book, is the same quality product of artwork, which is poetry, which is metaphysical reality, as everything that J.R.R. Tolkien did and the public lovingly produced and 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 I'm happy for his family they are supported with that if you would like to see someone who is exactly the same but in the modern day having to help other authors and artists like do what Neil Young is doing which is walk away from Spotify because of people like Joe Rogan who is not an artist Joe Rogan is not an artist. I th can think of many people like this on social media. They are whores. They are manipulators. They do not care about people, about animals, or about the earth. The person who published the Browning's Letters and Poetry was Christopher Ricks. If I'm not mistaken, let me go into my kitchen. Here is Baymax this morning. <laughs> Baymax is dreaming of spring because he has um, sat at that window. That's my dad's desk. And um, I feed the birds in the spring and the summer. And I've actually put some seed out this morning because the, the, the pigeons cooed at me on my roof. It's hilarious. The people in my life are like, Mom, stop feeding everybody. But because of the poop issue on the back porch, but it's like, you know, the dog, Dusty, can just go pee on the porch and expects me to clean it up. So, you know, turn about is fair play is what I've got to say to teens. <laughs> okay, so I came in here and I lost my... Yeah, no, I didn't. He's staring at me right here. Hi, Frank Zappa. Frank Zappa and Neil Young are the other kind of artist. And they are... Okay go into Revelation, there is this huge archangel, one foot on land and one foot on sea. Guess that chapter's going to need to be read by Kara Coffey because that's Tara too or I wouldn't be testifying like this. Did you hear me? America? I wouldn't be testifying like this if I wasn't part of that archangel. I can tell you who else is part of that archangel and that's the King of Kings. I wouldn't be, have survived that bullshit the past 14 years in this toxic society. Otherwise, this man, his life was shortened for various reasons, but the thing is, if you actually read his, his history and his testimony, he had to fight for every fucking piece of money he actually got. He was rejected the whole of his life, and he's still smiling. He didn't die. It's a waste of time. I concur. I'm about to give it up. 
I'm going to take his example. I don't smoke. Maybe I'll last a few more years. What's the matter, Christianity America? Knock, knock. This is Kara, the Ministry of Uncovered No More. You have a problem with how I can define the angels now? You just go sit on the pot, take a shit, and check your phone. Because that's a false identity. I'm in my dining room. I'm about to make a soup for those of us who need to lose weight. And my cat's watching the, for the birds because he saw mom here put the seed out because the pigeons cooed on my roof. And if there is one piece of music that I love, it's the birds singing. That's not the only one, but that was the one that woke me up this morning. I've already done stretches and everything. Okay. He had to work for everything. He's still smiling. So you wipe that nasty, sarcastic facial expression off. And you keep doing that. And let's get shit like Joe Rogan off Spotify. Spotify can be beautiful, but not when freedom of speech means that. And he said that too. So all I'm doing, you know, he's in the living room. I just saw him. He's sitting there going, amen, Kara. Don't like my spirituality? Change social media. American youth, change it. For who? For yourselves. Do you understand some of the depression and everything y'all are dealing with? You don't need medication. You need the sunshine. You need a dog. So let's go back to what I'm doing this morning that is of poetry and is of beauty. And yes, it goes on all of my media. And yes, I give it away. Thank God my bills are paid. I have a, a husband who works very hard and has his whole life. But I can tell you that he is struggling with a depression right now that he doesn't even want to accept. And that's all you're going to get about him. Because he's a faithful baby boomer and I'm tired of people persecuting him as well. He's willing to change his outlook on politics. Politics need to take a hike in the United States of America. But let's focus on cats right now and dogs. Part one, here's my dogs. Gidget, Tangy, Coley, Sam, Sammy, Valentine, Dusty. Literally, when I bought Valentine, all I could hear from the, from the great spirit was, this is going to save. Who it is saving is my relationship with my daughter, my oldest one. But... I don't see that in the flesh right now. So, you, again, you're dealing with a high-level spiritualist, so you can take a hike, because she and I have both been here before. And so, I'm, I, you know, I can, in two seconds, uh, Frank, come on in. Yeah, you're going to have to sit um, yoga style on the floor, because I removed chairs. Except for mine, because I've got a lot of work to do. Now, let me remind you of the Christian testimony of Valentine's life. I up and purchased Valentine, a man who fondled women's breasts and said that he was in the presence, that they were in the presence of Almighty God, meaning him, is Bob Jones of Bob Jones Ministries. Bobby Connor called him friend and not Kara Ann Beatty Coffee in Austin, Texas. I worked with him. I had to. But he's MAGA. They all are. Stubborn ass idiots. And I'll just leave it at that. So there's the first one. So... Here's the second thing.
So this is about to go in artwork. Here's the piece that's going to go in artwork. I haven't finished it. Let me um, let me throw some pencils at you here, and you're not going to get to see me finish it, but on the website. Uh, the only one I don't have because I'm about to sing you a song, bitches. And you just found out what chapter of the Book of Revelation is going in part two with Elizabeth Barrett Browning and. I made sure our Frank, our dearest Frank Zappa was in the mix. I wonder why Kara did that. Okay. I'm trying to be nice here, America. I'm trying to be nice. There's no humor here. There's no humor here. Do you understand that? Do you see this color right here? White. Not my child. The poinsettia that I got at Walmart for... A dollar, and it's gonna be here all year with my Christmas lights, praying for you so you can't say one fucking word except for thank you, Kara. Thank you, Frank Zappa. Thank you, Neil Young. We need to hit delete on some of the media that we are actually listening to and taking in. That's what America needs to say. What color did I add? All right. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white, we are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. And the cat. He's ever hopeful that he'll get to see a birdie boo-boo. Okay, so let's look at how much white Esther Grace she was in her class for art uh, put you see all the colors this was like f five or six years ago you know you're looking at a young lady who um, prophesied some pain in one of the siblings lives through a dream at the age of four and we're still together and we're still making sure this family is happy in a different ways one of my beautiful Beautiful children got this for me. Here's my paintings of the seasons. There's my meditation ball. This is from uh, Maynard's Little Parks Trees. This was in my mama's house. This whole, this has a beautiful story. Rocks that I've collected different places on my travels. The Golden Road of Judah. One of my favorite, favorite photos that I was privileged because I had red roses in the back. I can't have roses in the back anymore because they're dogs. Oh, anyway, okay. So I'm gonna close this with a very good picture of somebody in my life. Uh, <clears throat> the one that popped out in 45 minutes like me, uh, but some years later, I don't remember. Let's see, he's 20 now, so. Anyway, I'm not gonna figure that out. See the white, see the black, see that beautiful smile of innocence. He and I are done with your bullshit, America. Now let's move on to something kinder. There he is. That is Kara Coffee. Do that is my son born in my living room. Do you see where my hands are as I'm changing his diaper and we're looking at each other lovingly? Yes, there are people on the face of the earth who do things with their hands when they should be purely ministering to a child. I'm not one of those people, but I have been charged with things. Look at my hands in this picture. I wish to God one thing, that I had worn these the whole time. I wouldn't be dealing with painful wrists now if I had done that. So mamas, get some wrist, and daddies even, get some wrist support for your days of labor in the fields of our beautiful, beautiful life. Keep your hands where they belong in innocence. 
you have forgotten what innocence is, America. I just showed it to you, a mother and a child. Do you see those smiles? Do you see that? We're smiling again, he and I, but you have no idea what this mother and son went through. Let me show you somebody else. You have no idea what she's been through. Let me show you somebody else. You have no idea what she's been through. Well, I do. And you can fuck off your lies about this mother. Because you never, ever heard him. And he built three houses for me with my daddy. Those two men you never heard. You never heard them. You hate them. You lied about them. Just like Frank Zappa, who I can invite into my room with Elizabeth Barrett Downing in two seconds. Here's my grandbaby puppies. They're my grandchildren. I have lots of grandchildren before the human one comes, come, ones come forth. I have beautiful stories of children and animals that you don't get to hear anymore because you destroyed us. We had to start over. To Patsy, Pepper, Baloo, Trevor, Raven, Puzzle, Joker, Parker, Ro Rooster, Snoopy. <laughs> Somebody I love very much is uh, retweeting from Poodle Snarf on Twitter. Excuse me, I need my encouragement today from my world. Oh my goodness, I just snorted. Excuse me, I need some more coffee. Okay, so... A lot was covered in today. One poem. And <laughs> there's a part three. I just started it. Okay. You don't like my abilities. I don't like you at all until you cancel culture. The entire Republican Party. America. Cancel culture, that shit. Get it off our children. My children are coming back to that wholeness and they're going to bring the rest of them that, have to, that are adults and older and have to still deal with your sick society. We're coming back. One of my Twitter is Kara Lives Again. <clears throat> but how we do that is our business. America. Okay. I think maybe I cleared some shit out of my historical presence with, uh, you know, dad was in the military. He went to France. He drove, he was a medic, drove a truck. And I don't know how old he was there. Yep. He enjoyed women. Drinking. Smoking. And then prophesied before I turn 40, I'm going to lose my life, and there's a plan for me. At 39, he met Jesus, you know, the Christian way. You have no idea how much prophecy is in my daddy's life, but I'll tell you something. He looked at me and one day on our property that he and Uncle Paul built with the two houses. He looked at me and he said, he joked about it because everybody says I have, have Comanche Indian in me because everybody recognizes you need to be careful when you talk with her because you, you, you hide shit and you pull bullshit and verbalization and she's going to own. She's going to, you know. Now, I'm not going to say too much of the innuendo because our American Indians need, uh, they need to be only nurtured. It's like me breaking out into tears not long ago. I'm going to go black screen, breaking out into tears not long ago and saying, you know, I sh on YouTube and I'm saying, I should never have to do a floor again. Well, my family's fixing it. I didn't do the floors that day. They're here for me. They've always been here for me. It's you that turned us into something ugly 
on a property that we had to, the two parents had to be removed because of what my mother's family was doing. Again, my daughter, the one I just showed you her artwork that's in my office that I framed lovingly because she lovingly painted it. She doesn't even understand how beautiful her artwork is. My daughter, y'all treat us so bad. You have no idea. You have forgotten my story in Oak Hill, how I tried to bring my children into your midst and they literally just got persecuted with me. You know, we're talking... Uh, so a, a coach in, in volleyball at the YMCA in Oak Hill had to come up to me and say, well, well, well I do want to work with your daughter because he had pulled shit and used little cutesy little blonde skinny idiots that they were training to pick on other children in the leadership of the Oak Hill YMCA. I hope they've gotten a hold of that bullshit. Nonetheless, I looked at him and said, I don't know if you're going to work with my daughter or not. I have story after story about how I was rejected and my children were rejected in Oak Hill, how we were treated. Y'all aren't good neighbors in Oak Hill. You need to straighten your asses up. That's all I got to say. Anyway, I need some more coffee. turn this pretty. This is to all the cats and dogs in my life. I'm thinking of Willie Nelson singing with, oh, he, he's a beautiful, you know, to all the girls in my life. Well, to all the pets in our lives. And when you are tempted with pulling bullshit anywhere, try to get a pet. Fellowship, excuse me, fellowship with your pet until you heal. Take good care of the, your pet. And when somebody like me come, walks up and you're privileged with a conversation, do what people in my neighborhood do. They're kind, we have a good conversation, and they go, they go home, they go home thinking about a lot of what the possibilities are because I'm that good at being neighborly like my daddy. He built a fence that he didn't need to build. I can show you to keep peace with the Methodist preacher on the other side of that fence because that boy complained about how, you know, people pulling up their cars and their, the headlights were shining onto his property. So dad put up a piece of fence. That is a neighbor you can count on. I'm one of those neighbors. I've hugged one of my neighbors right in the middle of the street because of the bullshit somebody pulled on her. And it was bad bullshit. It wasn't complaining about a headlights kind of bullshit. It was bad, bad, bad bullshit. And it happened in downtown Austin and everybody knows it's happening and nobody like the police are cleaning this bullshit up. Okay. Let me give you a few details. What the normal routine is for a woman who's been raped doesn't get her helped in Austin, Texas. Police the police Stations across the greater Austin area, which means even Maynard, Pflugerville, and all of you. <laughs> Clean your systems up. You are not for the woman in your midst. But particularly in downtown Austin, you know, South by Southwest and all that good shit. No. 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 The real people of Austin, Texas know what's going on. And we are in solidarity. You need to clean that shit up. Most of us ain't Republicans. Okay. Let me turn into the nice woman because my cat needs me to and so do I need to. To flush my dog, part two. 
Other dogs in Thymie Do tracked the hares and followed through sunny moor or meadow. This dog only crept and crept next a languid cheek that slept, sharing in the shadow. Other dogs of loyal cheer bounded at the whistle clear up the woodside hying. This dog only watched in reach of a faintly uttered speech or a louder sighing. And if one or two quick tears dropped upon his glossy ears or a sigh came double, up he sprang in eager haste, fawning, fondling, breathing fast in a tender trouble. And this dog was satisfied if a pale, thin hand would glide down his dewlaps sloping, which he pushed his nose within after platforming his chin on the palm left open. I'm going to start crying. Because I saw Rooster platform his chin on my daughter's thigh as she was sitting there and we were trying to communicate clearly after what's happened to both of us who she's, you know, just painted that years ago and had a dream to warn her brother it was going to get hard at the age of four. I just saw that with Rooster and my daughter. So you can fuck yourself about what actually is a grandchild America. You can fuck yourself. This dog, if a friendly voice, call him now to blither choice than such chamber keeping. Come out, praying from the door. Presseth backward as before, up against me, leaping. Therefore to this dog will I, tenderly, not scornfully, render praise and favor. With my hand upon his head is my benediction said, therefore and forever. And because he loves me so, better than his kind will do, often man or woman. Give I back more love again than dogs often take of men leaning from my human. Blessings on thee, dog of mine. Pretty collars make thee fine. Sugared milk make fat thee. Pleasures wag on in thy tail. Hands of gentle motion fail. Never more to pat thee. I'm going to close with my Aunt Jamie. She helped take care of this man after dad died, dead in a street in 1933. He was born in 34. I need to get Grandma Era up here. And this brother took care of my daddy, some too, because CPS showed up. And this man and his brother, John, showed up on their porch. They had guns. CPS crept away. I didn't do anything is all I'm going to say about that. And you damn well better wipe that out. Because it's all bullshit lies. All of it. And I'm talking in 2019, 20, 21. You better state of Texas. Now, story time. Aunt Janie. Dad used to, Era Davis Beatty lived in San Antonio. Tried to marry a man after her husband died and all the children were here, but I don't know the backstory, but she ended up in San Antonio. She would clean and iron, I think, for to, to, you know, my dad went to bed hungry at times and stuff. They were the poor in San Antonio, poor white in San Antonio back in the day. And Era Davis Beatty would send the two youngest to Comanche 
County, Texas. There lived Uncle Willis and Aunt Janie. Aunt Janie's Davis, Uncle Willis Beatty. And uh, he had a farm or a ranch in Comanche County. And um, she'd send them there for the summers as teens, since they weren't in school. Uh, and, and they would feed the boys well and everything, and they would have a grand time. Dad had story after story. And let me tell you um, about this one, this story. This is Aunt Janie. Plump woman, taller than me. Uh, and, and Uncle Uncle Willis, uh, babies were, were Baptist preachers. Dear God, I'm glad. We're going to have some straightening out to do <laughs> uh, in our conference rooms in the baby life when Carol walks in. That's all I got to say. That's going to happen someday. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? <laughs> Baptist preachers, here we are. Uh... I can tell you somebody, it's two little somebodies that ain't going to be Baptist preach. <laughs> okay. Um, now, back in the day, Aunt Janie in her house, she'd wake up. There's a reason I'm telling this story, and Esther Grace has something to do with it. And I'm not going to tell you Esther Grace's son because she's so highly gifted and gorgeous. You damn well better get your social media cleaned up. That's all I got to say. I am done with you hating on my children, America. Um, she'd wake up to snakes laying beside her. It was so cold. <laughs> That's my Aunt Janie. I'm taking a leaf out of their books right now because Dad remembers the Sunday dinners, you know, where the family would get together there in Comanche County and the women, and they'd, they'd cook the food, man. They'd cook the food, but they'd put a blanket over it and you just ate all day. They, didn't, they, they sat down and visited after all that. You didn't mess with the women on Sunday. Days working hard enough. But they'd provide the food and everything. So that the men, because the men is working hard too. I, I got people in my life ready to li live that way. We work together. We get the food out there. and We're going to learn to take our day off. But you know, it's pretty sad about Sunday. You know, again, these were pastors and preachers. But I can tell you this. Ain't not one baby a Joel Osteen type. Does America have any questions? I'm, I'll close with... I know many a woman, myself included, that probably expire if we woke up with a snake sleeping with us because the snake was cold. That just give me nightmares <laughs> living, but I got my cinnamon candle here and I'm going to be okay and I'm looking at my children smiling as babies and littles. I gotta find Era Davis Bate and get her up here. She'll go right above my two youngest sons. Right there. Now let me show you some faithfulness in two women. One a baby that ain't that now. And my mama, who ended up in a mess, but she's a good woman. That's me, that's Goldenwood, that's the two men's where they built. That's my eighth child, cute as a button, and my mama. My mama was a faithful woman, if you'll notice, she had a head covering on. She was a good example of godly womanhood, but when it come to kicking ass, I had to carry her out of the hell of her own family, who tried to strong on me and the King of Kings. And we love them still, the King and I. All right, have a good day.